Praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to Spring of Water Christian Assembly. This is Pastor Ron. So glad that you're joining us today by way of live stream. And those of you who are on Facebook Live, those of you who are joining by way of our website, springofwater.org, welcome, welcome, welcome to this powerful uh, church where God is moving mightily. Uh, the message I have to share with you, as you can hear, some excitement in the background, the message, and I want to get inside to share this message with you. It's entitled, Believing in the Power of the Spoken Word of God. This message is going to change your life because you're going to see the power of God operate in your life through his spoken word. Go with me now into the service. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in
today that the Lord had. I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Shout it out, say, this is the day. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord had made. One more time, sing it out, say, this is the day. That the Lord had me. I will. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord had me. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to say something to you this morning. God wants you to know where you are. Did you hear me? God wants you to know where you are. Where he has brought you from and where he has brought you to. It's very easy to be someplace and not connected with where you are. It's very easy to be at some place. And it's as if you're having an out of body experience. You're there. Maybe someone invited you there and uh, you're just showing that I have accepted your invitation. It could be that you end up there because you're just lost. You're seeking some place to be, but you don't know where. God wants you to know where you are today. Are you with me? He wants you to know where you're standing today. That the place you are standing, because God is here, it's unlike any place else. So when we sing the song, if you understand where you are and whose you are and what can happen where you are and who is surrounding you in the place where you are, oh, you will have an awesome, awesome encounter with God. Until you understand where you are. Until you understand who is in your midst. Until you understand why you are where you are. Today will just be 
a going to church experience. But this is more than that. God wants you to know that this is more than that. And God wants you to experience him, experiencing him, experience him this morning. So we're going to sing that song one more time, recognizing where we are. Who is in our midst and where our help comes from? Come on, one more time. Let's sing it out, worship team. We're standing. Come on, raise your voice. And I know that there are wages all around, all around. And let us pray. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. I want you to know your hands are holy. Come on. These are holy hands. of you are here this morning maybe sick in your body amen maybe you're facing some kind of a crisis praise the Lord you're going through a challenge just want to pray for you Just want to pray for you, just want to pray for you, just want to pray for you, just want to pray for you today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today I'm going to share a message with you. Entitled Believing in the power of the spoken word of God. I'll say it again. Believing in the power of the spoken word of God. It's an area that we have not yet discovered its importance and what it can do for you. If only you knew the power of the spoken word of God. If you miss this by getting distracted You're going to miss out on the power of God operating in your life. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask everyone, just, just hold the cups for a second. That's fine, sis. I, I, don't, I don't want anyone to even move at this point. 
I don't want you to miss it. The power, believing the power of the spoken word. And so when we get ready for the operation of the word of God being spoken over your life, you need to be at complete attention. In the military, when the commander wants to get your attention, attention. That's where we are. And I want to speak healing into someone's body today in the name of Jesus. I want to speak deliverance through prayer for someone to be set free today. Whether you're here or you're joining our worship service by way of live stream, Facebook, or whatever medium we're reaching you by. The power of the spoken word of God. We thank God for the written word. But unless the written word is spoken, you are denied of the power of God in your life. And God has brought you here today so that the spoken word of God can be released in your life and you can be delivered, you can be saved, you can be healed, you can be lifted up, but you must believe. You must believe. And it's not me. It's not my spoken word. No matter how intently I speak it. But it's God's spoken word. That is going to heal you. And touch you. And so if you would bow your heads, may I remind you that God has sent his word to heal you of your diseases. And so in the name of Jesus, I speak healing in someone's life this morning without laying hands on you, without asking you to stand, but by the power of the spoken word, I sent my word and it now heal you of your diseases. In Jesus' name. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. If you receive that, tell the Lord thank you. If you believe that, tell the Lord thank you. If you can feel that, tell the Lord thank you. I am the bread of life. The bread of life, the bread of life. Those of you who eat of this bread, you shall have life. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am the living water. Those you, of you who drink of the living water shall never thirst again. In the name of? In the name of? In the name of? Silver and gold have I not, 
but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Will you receive that? Will someone receive that this morning? Will someone receive that this morning? No weapons form against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you in judgment is now condemned in Jesus' name. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that this morning? With man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Will you receive that as a prayer today? Would you receive that as an intercessory word today? You can do it in Jesus' name. You can overcome it in Jesus' name. You can go beyond it in Jesus' name. Somebody receiving that today? In the name of Jesus. You can conquer it. Come on now. You can conquer it. In the name of Jesus. I say you can conquer it. And sometimes the spoken word is spoken before the situation even happened. So won't you believe that today? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. And it's all in the name of? Jesus. The spoken word come alive in the name of? Jesus. In the name of? Jesus. In the name of? Jesus. Yes. See, the spoken word is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I hope you will buckle up when I get ready to deliver that word. I greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I just want to thank God for the opportunity that he has given me to stand before you and to share with you his word, his word. And so I pray that, um, that, that God will speak through me to you today and that the word you hear will not just be a word, but that the Holy Spirit will transform the word of God to make it a living word in your life. My prayer is that the word of God will come alive in your life and in your situation and whatever you're facing. In life, we're all going through. Trust me, I'm telling you. In life, we're all going through, we're all facing something. We're still in COVID. And we saw the devastation that COVID caused. And some of you might have lost loved ones, friends, family, relatives due to COVID. Everybody was concerned. Amen. Many people were scared, some of you, afraid because of COVID. And COVID is still with us. But scientifically and medically, they, are, they have it, you know, they're they are on it. But nonetheless, it was a pandemic that caused a tremendous loss of life in our nation and across the world. And I wish I could stand here today and tell you that it's over. We will have no such 
no more of such pandemic in our lives that you'll never get sick, that someone won't have some irregular cells developing in their body, no one will get cancer or, or heart condition or uh, Alzheimer's, that, that, that mental illness will go away. I wish I could tell you that, but unfortunately I cannot tell you that because life on this earth consists of those things. Amen. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world plagued by sicknesses and diseases. It's real. And so how do we cope with all of that? How do we overcome all of that? How can we go beyond all of that? And that's really what I want to share with you today. With this message that God has placed on my heart. Entitled, Believing the Power of the Spoken Word of God. So help me pray. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I want to thank you, God, for writing your words on my heart. But Lord, I can go to that sacred place, that special place, that I can get into your written word and bring the people a spoken word. I want to thank you for that. And may that be accomplished here today. I pray that the very words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer, in whose name I pray. The spoken word. That's a phrase and a terminology that started within the church. And it has gone beyond the church. People outside the church understand the, the power of the spoken word. They know about the spoken word. When you stand before a judge to hear if you're guilty or not guilty, and if guilty, what the consequences are, that judge does not put a handcuff on you. That judge does not drag you off to jail. That judge just speak a word. Amen. You will be sentenced to the Massachusetts State Penitentiary for 40 years with no possibility of parole. Some folks faint when they hear those spoken words. Some folks become incontinent of a lot of stuff when they hear those spoken words. Some are traumatized they know the power that rests with the words spoken by that judge in a black robe behind that desk. And it's amazing when people go in the courtroom, they have more respect for the spoken word of a man than the spoken word of God. I, I can't figure it out. Amen. And the words of the judge is not normally or usually gentle and kind. Amen. The courtroom is not a nice place to be.
But the spoken word of God has more power than the spoken word of a judge. Do, can I get an agreement here today? And if you can honor the spoken word of a man in his courtroom, why do you have problems honoring the spoken word of God in his house? We are missing something very important in our lives. You're not hearing enough of God's spoken word. Having the written word is good. The written word is there that you can pass it on from generation to generation. That's why it's written. That's why God raised up holy men of old to write down everything he wanted us to know. But it remains on the pages of a book, yet it's a holy book, But it doesn't do much for you in its written state. Because how many times we read it and then we forget. And some believe that the word of God is to remain in the Bible. And then the Bible becomes the holy book. Am I right? And you can't write in there. Man, if writing in the Bible going to keep somebody out of heaven, I'm going to have a hard time getting in. Because I write all over in here. Amen? Yes. So it's good to have the written word. But unless the re written word is spoken, it's not going to do much for you. And then there are those who know that there is power in the spoken word. But they don't believe. They don't believe. Just like folks know there is a God. And they'll tell you. I know there's a God. But by their life, they don't believe God. They don't want to hear anything about praying to God. Don't come tell me about Holy Ghost. And God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth. Folks don't want to hear that. But they'll quickly tell you, I know there's a God. I know there's somebody up there. And church, I'm telling you today, if people knew the power that rests upon the spoken word of God, they would be lining up to get in this assembly. Come on now, I'm telling you the truth. I said if they knew the power of the spoken word of God, they'd be lining up to come in and hear the word of God. Hear the spoken word of God. Some folks won't come in because they may be, they, they feel folks, you know, the pastor may ask me to read the word of God. And I don't read well. And I know Pastor moves by the Spirit, and he just may call on me to read the word of God. Amen. 
But if only they knew that there is power in the spoken word, that this time of the service is anointed. Are you with me? That when the word of God is spoken in the person's life, hallelujah, doors open, there's healing, there's deliverance, people get saved. They don't get saved by the written word. You can read the written word to them all day long. It's not until they hear it. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, the word of God. So it has to be spoken so they can hear it and that the word of God can manifest it's what it has been spoken about. The scripture I'm going to go to today is in John chapter 4, 46 through 51. Praise the Lord. Uh, before we go to that, I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 58. And that's part of our mission statement. Amen? What we do at Spring of Water. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58 and verse 7. Would you put that on the overhead? And so this is part of the instruction that I received from God to start this ministry. And what this ministry is all about. And this is a part of it. What we do. 58.7. Put this verse up. Yeah. 11 is our name. But this verse I want you. So the whole Isaiah 58 tells us what we need to do. 11 tells us the name of the ministry. But this is what we're instructed by God to do. So let's read it. This particular verse. Read it aloud. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Pause for a second. How many of you did not have breakfast before you came to church today? Let me see your hand. You got one over here. Number one, you stand. Sister Coretta. You can stand. Who else? Sister Candace. Oh, look at these hands. Huh? Well, we'll take, we'll take one hand from over there. So we'll go with Sister Laverne. So each of you just stand up. Just stand up. Three. I think I put three people. One, two, and three. Okay. For being so... God has something for you today. But listen to this. I just read what God told us to do. Am I right? Is it not to deal by bread to the hungry? When you don't have breakfast and you go to church and the preacher preach it like I can preach at times. Don't you get hungry? Now I can read. And read to the church. Is not this the deal by bread to the hungry? Is not, is not, am I right? But does that satisfy her hunger? Does that satisfy your hunger, Sister Coretta? Okay. Sister Laverne, I can say that you're still hungry, right? Praise the Lord. Now, I hope you like Dunkin' Donuts. Come, it's fresh. <laughs> now, when I give them bread, stay with me now. Please come, Sister Coretta. This may be bagel with sausage and eggs. Amen. Just stand right there for a moment. I give them. So come and get bread. I should have said, come and get bread. Amen. Come and get some breakfast. Come and satisfy your hunger. Which is more impactful? When I just read it? Or when it's spoken 
and manifested. You see, the spoken word brings the manifestation. Are you with me? The written word is to let you know where to go and find that word and to read the word. But the spoken word brings results. I ask, who's hungry? Put the scripture back up, right? The scripture says, deal your bread to the hungry. I could read that to them all day long. They're going to leave here hungry. But I tell you, in Jesus' name, amen, thanks to the Duncan family, their hunger is going to be satisfied. You, you may take your seat, eat after the service, and don't get hungry again, and eat your breakfast before you come to spring of water. Pray. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. The spoken word. In the Old Testament, I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 11, and then we're going to go to the text and we're going to wrap it up. Deuteronomy 11:18. God told the children of Israel under the Old Covenant, right? Deuteronomy 11:18. So commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Let's read aloud. Um, let's read aloud. Deuteronomy 11:18, the King James Version. Let's read. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart. Lay them up in your heart and in your soul. And bind them for a sign upon your hand. So they used to carry the word of God wrapped up. Amen. And they would carry it around. The people would carry the word around. Amen. That they may be as frontlets. And so if you go to Israel like we have been, or you in New York, or some places where you have the Hasidic Jews, you will see them have a frontlet, a, a band around, and in there they have the Ten Commandments. And they wear it as a frontlet. But they just wear it. They don't speak it to you. It's there as a reminder. And God's word is a reminder. But under the new covenant, in Hebrews 11, 7 through 10, and then we're going to go to the text for today. Hebrews 11, 7 through 10. Amen. It tells us, the writer of Hebrew, about the word of God. So we don't wear it. But it says it's written on our hearts. Written on our hearts. Hebrews chapter 8. Let's read together. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So the first covenant, which included just wearing the word, ended up, with the people having some faults because they, 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 they looked religious. Amen? But they only looked religious. God's word was not anointed, sanctified, and set apart in their hearts. They wore it on their forehead. They wore it on their hands. It's like people with the rosary bead. I still can't get it. I still can't get it. Amen? It's like some gangster wearing the cross. I still can't get it. Gangsters have the biggest cross. Where is that cross taking you? Is my question. Hallelujah. The new covenant. Let's go to verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, read aloud, saith the Lord, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Next verse, next verse, next verse. You're going to hear what this new covenant is. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regard them not, saith the Lord. So the word, they had the word, but they weren't practicing the word. And God came up with another way, hallelujah, for his word to have impact and power in our lives. It's not that God made a mistake, but Jesus had to come. For the word to take on life. Jesus says, the word that I speak to you, it is spirit and life. You see, the spoken word, when spoken under the power of the Holy Ghost, say amen, somebody. And when it's spoken by the anointing of God, then the word now has power. Amen. Come on, church. And many are speaking the word, but they're not speaking under the anointing. You see, it's the anointing, hallelujah, that gives power and manifestation to the word of God. We need to stop playing with the word of God. It needs to be spoken under the anointing of God that it can have results in the life of people. So when you say to somebody, rise up and walk, they will get up and walk. And not always in the physical. Because sometimes God keeps us down, but he raises our spirit. Sometimes we may remain in a physical condition. Stay with me, somebody. But he saves our soul. Yes. And he gives us eternal life. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. The spoken word of God. And so, in order to see the manifestation of the power of the spoken word, you can't carry it on your hand and on your wrist. And you can't wear it. Can you put the scripture back up? You can't wear it as a frontlet, the one for Hebrews. Amen. You can't wear it. Hallelujah. So the writer tells us, amen. Verse, can you go to verse 10? Verse 10. Let's read aloud. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. This is the new Israel. Those of us under the new covenant, Israel. Amen. That I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Listen, I will put my laws where? Not on frontlets, not on a trinket, but in their mind. Amen. And I will do what? Write them. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But I will write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. The word of God is God. Come on, church, say amen. Speaking of Jesus, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. Praise the Lord. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 4 and 4. Amen. That Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word sp spoken out of the mouth of God. See, you want the spoken word to live. Are you with me? 
I said the spoken word is what gives you life. You want the spoken word. Don't get tired of a church because the devil will make you get so tired of church that that which you need to keep you alive, you will miss it. And you will go chasing for a word that brings death and can ruin your life. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap up in here. Sometimes I wish there was a way for me to know that you're receiving the word. Like I'm going to bring everybody a bell. <laughs> and when I say something, because you don't say amen, you don't clap, maybe I should get you to ring the bell. Huh? Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what we want. Amen. 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 And we don't just want to read it. Faith comes by hearing. We want to hear it. And hearing by the word of, same word of God. Hearing by the word of God. The same word of God. Oh, I wish you would develop a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. Are you with me? That's what brings the change. That's what's going to change your life. That's what's going to cause you to see the power of God manifested in a real way in your life. That's when the word of God comes alive. Are you with me? It's when it comes alive. When it's spoken with authority and under the anointing, the word I speak is spirit and life. And that's what's missing. Amen. There are folks here in the word today, but there's no spirit. There's no Holy Ghost leading. There's no anointing. Let me tell you, for me to preach to you like this, I have to seek the Lord. I can't just get up and, and say this. God's word has to be written on my heart. And sometimes we, we preach it speaking the word, and, you know, we have all kind of thoughts running through our mind. Here he goes again. You're going to be here till 12.30. I'm telling you the truth. Look, 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 look at him up there. His bow tie crooked. Hmm? <laughs> I'm getting a little laugh out of Pastor Philip today. Come on, let's put our hands together for that. All I hear is... <laughs> when I can make Pastor Philip laugh during the sermon... I'm scoring a 10. 10 out of 10. The church. Get to know the power of the spoken word. Don't just know it, but believe it. Apply the spoken word. Get in your Bible. If I were you, find out everything Jesus said and did. Because that's when the word came alive. Amen. When Jesus spoke it. The Bible says we're ambassadors for Christ. Amen. When we're ambassadors. We speak. What the king. We, when we say something. It's as if the king says it. Did you know when you preach the spoken, catch this now. When I preach to you the spoken word of God, don't let the devil try to trick you and confuse you and put all kind of thought into your mind. Okay? When I declare the spoken word of God, whether I am rich or poor, black or white, Okay, 
whether it's me or first lady, so whether it's a male or female speaking it, get your gender bias out the way. When we speak it, we're speaking it in Christ's stead. Are you with me? I've been anointed to preach this word to you. I've been called to preach the word to you. I have a responsibility to speak the word over your life. So my role in your life, it's not just to dedicate your babies. Don't get no ideas, those of you in still in childbearing age or some of you way beyond it. I want to help pastor fulfill his role. <laughs> but it's not just to dedicate your babies. My role is, not, but it's not just to perform your marriage vows. And I like doing that. Amen? You know, my role is not just to sit down and counsel you when the marriage ain't working. Come on now. You know, some folks have the pastor's role. They get it all figured out. Praise the Lord. My role is not just to bury those you know who have died. Notice I didn't say to bury you when you die. I don't want to empty you the church today. But, amen. Like, pastor, are you picking on me? No. But my role is to bury the dead. Am I? Right? And I have to do that. You've seen me do that. But, but that's not just my role. It's not just to advocate for you and to write letters of recommendation for you. To answer you when you need me. Where's Pastor? Call him. You didn't call me back. Are you the one? I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Some folks have my role all in their head. It's not my primary role. Even preaching is not my primary role. Teaching is not my primary role. My primary role is to declare to you the spoken word of God that you can overcome the enemy in your life, that if there are demons, they can be cast out. If there are habits, they can be broken by the anointing of God. My role is to preach the word so that the word will change your life. My role is to speak to you, Jesus Christ, the word of God, so you can receive him into your heart and your life is changed. My role is to speak God's spoken word that the power of God will be manifested in your life. The power of the spoken word. My role is to declare it. Your word is to believe, accept it and believe it. And if you will do that today, you'll get your healing. You'll get your deliverance. If you're backslidden, you'll, you'll hear his voice calling you to, to come back. Come on to me. All you who labor and If you will receive the spoken word. I'm going to close. We'll have a part two. I want to tell you about a man. Who knew the power. Of the spoken word of Christ. Oh. I want to encourage you. Read the whole Bible. But whenever you get to where. Jesus spoke. And something happened. Underline that. Write that on your heart. Write that scripture on your heart and use that word. It will bring the same results if you believe. 
I said it bring the same results as in Bible days, if you will believe. Let's put today's scripture up and we're going to close. John chapter 4, I said. John chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Just going to read it, maybe make a point, and we'll pick up from there next week. Now that you understand the power of the spoken word of God. John chapter 4. 46. We'll stand, let's read and close. Let the word of God come home. I'm not going to say much after this. Let's read together. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, underline heard, and we'll elaborate on that next week. Grace and Giselle, you traveled a long distance to hear the word of God. And I pray you're not disappointed today. Driving all the way from New Jersey to get here. And those of you who live in Boston, I pray that you're not disappointed today. Even though the word may not be what you wanted to hear, but it's the word of God. And I pray that you heard the word of God today. This man heard that Jesus was come out of Judea and into Galilee. I pray you'll know that he's here today. I pray you'll know that his anointing is here today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That his sweet spirit is here today. I pray that you have felt his presence in this house today. Or else it would have been a total waste of your time. Hallelujah. And not everyone can say that about going to church today. Are you with me? And I pray you want to hear more. I pray you want to be where Jesus is. I pray that you, you will come so you can hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he heard that Jesus has come out of Judea into Galilee, he went on to him, underline went on to him, we'll touch on that next week, and besought him, underline besought, that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And God knows that for some of you to believe, you have to see signs and wonders. And the spoken word, I'm telling you today, the spoken word of God is there. And God has gifted us. And God has blessed us with his spoken word that you can see sign and wonders. The spoken word of God will bring signs and wonders. Change lives, change marriages, change homes. The spoken word of God. Don't get tired of it. Don't ever feel you've heard it too much and too often. Don't let the devil give you excuses why you shouldn't come. Certainly if you have something to do, make sure you put in Christ first. And if you have to do something, hallelujah, work, whatever it is. That's okay, but don't allow the devil to give you excuses why you shouldn't come. And hear the spoken word of God. Well, don't let the devil do that to you. Hallelujah. The noble man said unto him, Sir, come down here. My child died. It was an urgency. Is there an urgency in your life today? When you come, come with an urgency. 
Jesus say unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. Did you hear that? Jesus just spoke to her. Oh, he just spoke the word, church. He just spoke the word. That's all he said. That's all he said. Go thy way, thy son. Just those few words. That's all he said. Just a few words can change your life. Just a few words can raise the dead and bring you. Uh, you're dead in your dreams and gold and aspirations. Somebody killed your dream. Just a few words. Thy dream live it. Thy goal shall be fulfilled. Your expectations are met. Your body is healed. A door has been opened. I've opened the windows of heaven. Receive your blessing. I've made a way for you. Seem to be no way. I've made a way. Look, look, and you'll see a way in the wilderness of your life. Just the spoken word of God. Thy son liveth. The Bible says, and the man believed. That's what gets in the way, church, our belief, our faith. Sometimes just at the point where you're supposed to believe, the devil brings doubt. Maybe the devil brings a judgmental spirit. The devil blinds you. That's why sometimes I have to say, stay focused. Stay focused. Because just at the moment where God is about to move, you become distracted. A fleecing thought. A taste, a desire. Man said, Baba says that he believed the word that Jesus spoke unto him. And he went his way. Read with me. We're wrapping up. And as he was now going down, the servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Jesus didn't visit the house. He just spoke a word. Sometimes we want God to do more than he wants to do because we have it our own way. Why is he not doing this? Why is she not doing this? Why is this not happening here? And all of that. And we get our own personal desires in the way. Sometimes we chase these desires. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 52. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Just make a note there and I'll elaborate next week. He's an on-time God. Yes, is he here? Yes, yes, yes. Church, he's an on-time God. Believe that today, that he's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to wrap up. So the Father knew, underline knew, that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Believe. What did he believe? The spoken word of God. And what did he see? The power of the spoken word of God. I leave you with that thought today. Don't shy away. From the spoken word. Don't get distracted. Don't get persuaded. Don't get deceived. Jesus said today. If you have heard my voice. Harden not your heart. Don't let the devil. Drop stuff in there. That's not even so. Father.
Father, we thank you today. God, just one word, just one word, just jump one word can change the course of our lives. One word can save us, save our family, save generations to come. Give us a hunger and a thirst for your word. No more excuses. Get self out of the way. Help us to hear your word, Lord, and receive your spoken word that there may be manifestations of your power in our lives. In the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for what this church is going to become or further become because of the spoken word of God, the spoken word of God. Sometimes just a few words, thy son liveth. Hallelujah. Somebody just need to declare that before we go. My son liveth. My son liveth, my children liveth, my daughter liveth, my father liveth, my mother liveth, my son, my daughter, my family liveth. Thank you, Lord. Your word has found root. It has gotten to where you have sent it. Thank you for using me today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray that you have been blessed today. Take that word now. And know that there is power in the spoken word of God. Yes, there is power in the written word. But the written word comes alive through the spoken word. Go now and speak the word of God in your life and in every situation that you are facing. Remember, it's in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you next week. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.